Hey everybody, hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Four Dads Pod and happy Independence Day, happy 4th of July. By the time that this is going to be out, you guys are going to be enjoying, hopefully, your 4th of July. Hopefully you guys have it off and are able to enjoy it. Maybe get some fireworks, eat some hot dogs, hamburgers, and celebrate with the fam. Uh, again, thank you guys for all your support. Again, for not just this podcast, but our YouTube channel, we literally just hit 900 subscribers, which is huge for us. Small number, a small number, but hey, like little golf claps, you know, it's slowly yeah. working its way up there. And if you guys haven't subscribed to that channel, I would highly recommend. Yeah, little snaps. Little snaps. Highly would we love it if you would just subscribe to our channel. Give us some extra support because if we get a thousand, we have a chance of potentially making some money off our videos and maybe even maybe we'll push out some more content, some better content, since it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to get out with Julio because he has his second daughter coming soon. Super stoked for him. And then we've already announced it already. I have a daughter coming in December. So two kids, that's going to be tough. We're definitely trying to get something set up before his daughter comes in August. I know it's the end of August. I know we, there should be some date that we sh we can make something happen. And I'm really hoping that we can get something to go. Um, but let's jump into it really quickly. I want to talk about the round that I played with the head fitter of Vodagol, Brandon Frazier, one of my buddies. And uh, we we're hoping to have Don Julio there. The video, when this comes out, will probably be released within the next hour or two from when this podcast actually does come out. Uh, and it was a blast. We played from the way back tees, two-man scramble. If we would have had a three-man scramble with Julio, I know we would have at least had at least probably four to five shots better than what we ended at. And it was, it was awesome, dude. It was great weather. And... The craziest thing, well, maybe not the craziest thing, but it was kind of crazy. 30 minutes after I we finished the round and I drive home, Josh Allen shows up. That's so gets awesome. Fitted, gets fitted for his Avoda clubs. Apparently wasn't able to hit eight, wasn't able, had been struggling to break 80 with his Taylor made clubs. Gets fitted with Avoda, gets uh gets his clubs the next day, goes out on the course, shoots. Starts the whole, so I think, no, starts the course at four under, four straight birdies to start the round. Absolutely. At, at Dragonfly? At Dragonfly, at Dragonfly. Four straight birdies, ends up like three under on the day, and is just apparently just talking to, he came down for like his grandpa had, I think he had, he was having some issues, so he came out with some family to, to see how his grandpa was doing, but also was running some kind of a, a kid's uh, quarterback camp. And one nice. of the guys who helped him with the quarterback camp was a friend of Brandon's that he comes out to get fitted and, you know, swing lessons and things like that. And that's how the cool. connection was made. And uh, he was saying like, dude, I, I haven't seen Josh Allen like this excited for like golf stuff in a long time. Like he was, he just couldn't stop talking about his irons. Bro. Uh, I mean, I remember, I, I think you and I saw the video when he was at the AT&T when he had just signed his, his big contract with Taylor made and they gave him all this cool stuff and he was like super stoked. And then it was like, he did some videos with Bob Does Sports. He did a video with, I think, the Good Good Boys, right? Um, I think he did do one with Bryson. Mm. And, you know, it just seemed like after that where he just was struggling scoring, it was like he just stopped doing videos entirely with people yeah. and just kind of started yeah. just doing celebrity events. So that, that's cool, dude. I mean, yeah, he's, play he's playing in the Tahoe, the Tahoe Pro Am this yeah, season. This or next weekend. He's, yeah, um, he's got to, man. I mean, that's such, but... that's such a cool tournament. But those Avotas, man, um, let me tell you, this was really my first round that I played with them. Because my previous round that I had, uh, where I played from the forward tees, I think I had like one or two shots with the irons because it was either driver, three wood, wedge, or, you know, you know, pretty much wedge every time. So I wasn't able to swing. And, like, I still was learning the distances with this these clubs. I still haven't had as much time to really get the distances down. I will tell you that my 46 degree pitching wedge normally with my t100s was about i'd say 140 to 146 maybe depending on that like right around there but with these avotas let me just look at my phone to double check the average of like seven shots that i had of, of good shots ones that i kept the average was 158 yards so Dude, I, I mean i i mean i already hit my pitching wedge like one 155 to 160 like Dude, I'm telling you, these things have some, I don't know if it's like the hot face. I don't know what it's like. They are bent to 46 degrees. They aren't strong like they used to be. These are legitimate of what I play with the C100s. And I have 
distance. I don't know if it's also the shafts on top of it, the, the extra Could stiff, be. you know, that I'm not used to. Um, or, I mean, that I should have been fitted for originally. But I am getting some crazy distance. I think I was hitting in my six iron, like 215. And I know it was hot. It was warm outside, too. So that obviously has a little bit to do with it. But, dude, I was smashing the ball. And I was like, dude, this is kind of crazy. Like, the downside is my 50 degree to my 46 degree. Because I go with the title. Is, I think it's an SM8 at the moment. Yeah. I have about, like, a 30-yard 30, 30 cap. <laughs> I'm like, please, anything like – Okay, maybe lying, maybe like 20, 25 yards, or it's like 130 to like 155. I'm like, ah, crap, I don't have that. Like, oh, just give me a soft pitching wedge. No, I don't have that. I have one swing, and that's what's going to happen. I just hope the yeah. wind's in my face if I need to go shorter. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> that's pretty crazy. Um, well, if you don't mind me asking, what was what did you say was the damage on those? The damage, well, I, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say in, in front of here. I'll tell, I'll tell you off camera. I mean, yeah, so so the round was great. It was honestly, if you look at the scorecard when when the video comes out, it's pretty boring. There are so many pars. I think we had like five, we had like at one point, like five or six pars. We would put ourselves in the fairway. We would put ourselves on the green, but about like, I think we hit 16 greens. Uh, and it was insane because, but the only downside was we put ourselves about like 30 to 40 feet. So those are kind of hard to make from even with three or four people and a good putter and stuff to make those putts, um, <laughs> you know, but if we maybe we would have had you out there for driving, we would have had at least 20, 30 yards in more, maybe more. I don't know, yeah. but well, I appreciate that. But dude, I've been, I've been playing some boring golf, like where it's just like par, par, par kind of stuff. or just, It's like par. And then I'll mm -hmm. get like, I'll get hot. I'll get hot and get maybe two or three birdies, like get two yeah. birdies back to back. And then also another par and then stupid mistake, like mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep, stupid mm -hmm. mistake to where um, I've been, I've been trying to do this thing with my swing where I'm, I'm kind of setting myself up directly at the target and get my club face to where I want the ball to start. Mm -hmm. And um, dude, I've just been pure in the ball. I mean, okay. I've been That's good. Great. it's just been boring. Like, mm. even, my, even my buddy, my buddy, Corey, I have a Corey over here, too, as I do have my buddy, <laughs> Corey in Fresno. My Bay Area but, Corey. Yeah. But I, um, even he was saying, he's just like, dude, you're playing lights out. But he's like, it must be so boring to you right now. I'm like, it is. Because I'm like, how am I missing these putts? How am I mm. missing these? Like, and, and the thing is, is, like, I'm I'm getting it past the hole, but it's, like, on edge. Or I'm catching yeah. it the edge. And it's just giving, and I'm just like. That's oh. got to be irritating, dude. Uh, and then, and then my wedges have been, I literally, so this is going to be weird to say, but I watched a video of, um, the DOD King and I've been watching his matches. The kids got crazy short game. Like it's, it's unbelievable. Good. Mid -check. Yeah. Yep. And so I just started kind of doing some of the things that he was doing, which was already kind of presetting the club and just kind of hitting everything. Like it's a putt. Right. And just, Oh, no, straight, straight back, yeah, straight back instead of like straight. bending the wrist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you already have the you already have the forward lean, and all you're trying to do is just be real smooth and just hit it to the spot and let the action do its thing. But yeah. I've also been I've also been watching like the short game king, right? Who who does uh, uh I think he him and Carol they're part of the uh, tequila at the turn um kind of a new oh. up and coming yeah um, YouTube YouTube golf channel. They're pretty cool. I like their videos. Um, but dude, even him, like he he like hoods the club, and then you see him when he hits it because he comes so so steep inside. Mm -hmm. Everything's like a draw, but then the club face is like is aiming so or is turned so far back at the camera, and, and it's because he's clearing his hands so well. But I've been watching Dang. him when he hits flop shots, and I'm just like, oh. So I've now just put it together, and I've been getting some really good play dude like i had a shot on 16 which is a par five um at foxtail i i hit a decent drive kind of on a downhill lie hit a perfect shot right at the trees just started to draw around and the the, the sad thing about that hole is like you can't land on the green because then your ball just rolls off so then mm -hmm. i try to land it in front and let it go but then the ball just plugs because it's wet it's the one mm. spot that doesn't get any sun ah. so it's like you, but anyways <laughs> then i have like i have like a 40 yard 40 yard chip shot but then i was like you know what winds into my face here i just want it just to sit soft like 
let me let me just throw up a flop shot and just hit it so pure. I end up I end up like hitting just in front of the pin and it just sat like for an easy birdie. Hmm. And it was nice. I was nice. just like, wow, like okay, having a little more confidence. But I know I've been telling you I need to send you those videos. I actually just ordered um like a terabyte of of a of, of external memory. Yeah, an external memory card because nice. I got two of those. Some, because for some reason, dude, like I don't know if it's just an Apple thing or what, but it's like the photos that I have already stored, like from everything with Adelina and our family trust. Oh, like, and it's already taken like, oh, up you all have, the... you have too much. Yeah. And I'm like, are you kidding mm -hmm. me? I have two terabytes of, of of memory in this computer. I bought the I bought the most I could have. There's no way. Yeah. So, well, let me, let me just tell you really quickly. When it comes to the storage, so I just I probably have the same laptop as you, but for mine. Every video that I make, I have to transfer the memory card of all of our videos, all the footage that we got onto my one terabyte, right? I do that, and then I put on the shot tracers for the shots that you want, and then I obviously keep it on that one terabyte. And then when I want to edit or create a video, what I have to do, because my computer will run out of memory, it's like... And then I'm screwed if it runs out of memory while I'm in the middle of video. That just means all the stuff that I just edited is going to like basically crash. I have to put it on a separate one terabyte. Uh, well, I have two of them. I have one that I got like 15 years ago and one that I got like last year for Christmas. And I put it on that one. And so basically I have the file that I have for the video itself on this um, external hard drive. So I can, you know, it can ramp up or whatever. And I even reach out to Jet. The, uh, the jet from, uh, you know, Bob the sports. I'm like, Hey, do you have to use like an external hard drive? Like when you're like editing videos, because it just takes up so much memory. Like some of my videos, like I think our, our nine hole, one of our nine holes took up like 500 gigabytes because like when I throw things on top of it, like, you know, like I add in another clip, I add in like our scorecard, I add in, you know, like little, little sounds, little sound bites. Uh, I have to edit the, uh, what do you call it? The the flyover, speed it up, slow it down, you know, add in the little, how many yards it is. Like that thing just keeps on adding up and adding up. He goes, yeah. So I was like, okay, well, at least it's not me. It's just the computer because again, we only have, yeah. two. it's like for me, actually, I don't think I have, I think I have one terabyte on my computer, but I can't keep them on my computer. And if I do, I have to literally just delete it as soon as I'm done with it, because I'll get the same thing every time. And I've yeah. done it so many times that it sucks. I hate it. Yeah, been there. <laughs> yeah, no. I, so that's what I'm just realizing. Like, I'm over here thinking, like, dude, okay, I have two terabytes of memory in this thing. It should be just fine. Mm -hmm. Wrong, though. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah, but so. back to the video really quickly of uh, where for the the way back to you, Sue. So one thing that I implemented on this, I was asking Brandon like a bunch of questions about a photo. So I'm really hoping that when the video comes out, because the Avoda videos have been like the ones that have been doing the best, just because that's yeah, the it's price, brand price new, in one. yeah, dude. Price yeah. in one, you know. Oh, what are these Avoda irons? And I'm the only one as of, or we are the only one as of right now that have Avoda stuff out. And because of them being so exclusive to Dragonfly, literally the only place that as of right now that they're fitting, like it's awesome. Take advantage of it. And yeah. so I got, I got a ton of questions I asked him, obviously ones that I'm allowed to, or he's allowed to answer, not things that, you know, that are upcoming and things like that. Like if you saw the iridescent driving iron that he had that, um, he just put that thing together. And apparently he's like in the video, he's like, yeah, it's coming out. We'll probably come in a few weeks. And then he texted me and I, I saw him that later that day at the range. And he was like, it's actually going to come out in a few months. But the head, the head, the owner of Avoda, uh, Tom Bailey, he was just like, yeah, it, even if even he put it out, it's fine. At least let it be known, you know, that it's out there. Because I don't really know of really any other golf clubs that have iridescent. The club head looks sick. Um, but uh, it'll, I'm hoping it'll it'll bring up some good views. It's also an hour-long video, man. An hour long. Because of all the questions that I had with Avoda and hoping that uh, people just have questions. Because they're expanding, dude. Like, it sounds insane with how quickly things are going for them and how good – they're going to try and have fits all throughout the like the United States soon. You know, yeah. people that are actually able to be verified and get them out their heads and uh, test them out. And I'm starting to see a few other people on their social media pages that are that they're uh, retweeting or whatever um, that are bigger that are starting to like, oh, I just got my hands on these new video with with me coming out with these. And I'm like, 
well, I hope that benefits us. You know, people looking at them will look at us, you know, as well on suggested videos of Avoda. But um, yeah. we missed you out there for sure, man. It would have been, oh, I hit, I hit a 308 yard three wood. I believe it. I believe it. It was in, we had 430 yards in, and we ended up with like. Wait, what did you say? 430 yards in? It was the oh, 17, yeah, from the way, 17th, yeah, from the way the 17th hole was 702 yeah. yards, and we yeah. both hit our drive so bad, so bad. Um, and yeah, with 340 was like a two, 260, like that horrible drives when you watch the video, horrible. But I, I like the ball was teed up on like it, it felt like it was teed up, and I just best connection I've ever had in my life. I was like, holy crap, like, there's no, nice. like. It actually, you actually one of those ones that you hit it, and it actually did go as far that you that you kind of thought. It wasn't just like, what two forty? Yeah. Gosh dang it! You know, <laughs> it felt so good. <laughs> it felt so good off the face. But uh, but yeah, I mean, PGA Tour wise, what caught your eye over the last well, week? I, I, I was did, uh, I was just gonna say just so just so everybody knows, like I definitely was like bummed out. I mean, oh, of course, of course. I can't, like, like you tried. Jesus, I know. Like, he just, he just came home. And was just like, are you still angry? <laughs> I was oh, like, no. I was like, don't ask if you don't want to know. Yeah. And she was like, yeah, yeah. She's like, yeah. She's like, I hope you smiled in front of, like, in front of the baby. I hope everything, like, hope you still at least did. That. I'm like, we had a great time. <laughs> but I'm like, you know what? Like, <laughs> right. You right. got to do all this stuff this last weekend. You like you had a great yeah. time. Yeah, I should have like I should have been there. She's like, she. It was just yeah, just back and forth. But I felt bad because I was just like, man. And then when you posted the story, I'm like, God, it looks like such a great day. And I was just like, uh. But the nice thing was is like she took care of bad time and she let me get out there and go play. I think yeah, I you got some holes in too, right? The nine holes that night, yeah. which was nice. Yeah, yeah. So, and yeah, once you send out those, we'll definitely be able to. Oh, Dude, that's the thing. Money. Like I said, I just have so much, but it's like I gotta. I, I just ordered the 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 thing, so I gotta wait a couple of days for it to come in. Perfect, no worries. But, but yeah. yeah, so if you didn't think that Don Julio's trying, he's trying. Okay, he's yeah. trying. He cares. <laughs> But yeah, back to the PJ, dude. What uh, what were the last two weeks? I know we took about a week off because we just had a life got away of things. Yeah, I dude, I gotta touch on this. I know you like I know you've been busy, but how the heck is it that at the travelers um that people were able to just jump onto the hole in the middle of a playoff and <laughs> protest? Like nothing I, like I'm sorry, I know there's volunteers everywhere, but like, how do you do that? I mean, it could have, and luckily they were just, you know, they were With just spray painting or whatever. Yeah, like they whatever were just spray, they spray painting and dropping oil, but it's like, dude, that could have been so much worse. Oh my gosh. You know, dude, for them you just to get that video like that? Of, that, of, of that guy who's like being checked at the door and he's going like this and like he's not even touching the person at all when he's mm -hmm. like risking them. It's like basically the same thing at a PGA tour event. They just look that, around. Well, that was going to be my next like, point. I was going to be like, dude, this now has probably changed PGA events forever, especially for all the big ones now. Like, Oh, hundred percent. I mean, dude, you thought, I mean, people thought waiting in line to get in through the gates at, at, um, at the waste management was long. Now imagine oh, now boy. you're going to have, you're going to have oh, TSA, boy. TSA, like, like, uh, Body security. Standards. <laughs> dude, for real. Like I, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, it's, you know, it's scary to think of like where we are at, but it's just kind of like, I understand people are passionate about what it is, but there's just a time and place. And know? the majority of the time that things get ruined is because of these people <laughs> who don't even go to these events, who don't even enjoy these events. They just yeah. are doing it for whatever they want and they ruin it for everybody else. Yep. And I like, I always tell my wife, I'm like, like, especially when you're like on Twitter or you're on social media or just in person and someone's just like, like belittling you about what you believe in and saying like how stupid you are. Or, oh, you got to believe in this or like, like Bible thumping, you know, right. it's like, I'm just telling you right now, like after hearing that or seeing that, I do not care about your cause at all because yep. you don't care about what I care about, uh -huh. you know, or at least showing respect to it. You don't have to like it, you know, but at least show Harvard. some like respect to it. Oh yeah. Well, I had some right before we started too. Oh, there was uh, one that just went off right now. It just no, I heard, no, I heard, I heard, oh, okay. I heard, yeah, yeah, I heard that. That's why I was like, I heard, I had one too, like right before, but who was that? Who was that? This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. 
Um, but like when, when people do that to me, it, it just irritates me because I always have that issue of when something happens, whether like it like put, cut off in, on the road, I think that, oh, they're doing it to me. When they might not be doing it to me, they might just not see me or whatever. It might not be like direct to me, but I take it, it internally. And <laughs> dude, like, I'm like, dude, like, you just ruined that for everyone. You look like a jerk. You're, you're like, you're rude about it. You're like, why? Like, like you said, time and a place for everything. Yeah. And that's not it. No, it's, it's definitely not, man. And it's, you know, kind of to that, like a few months ago, um, with the whole, with the whole, you know, free Palestine thing, dude, some, some protesters like blocked the, the golden gate, dude, traffic was like, dude. and they let them do it. They let them do it. They let them do it. If, if, if you're going to block traffic, dude, and I am a cop or I am someone that has a snow plow in San Francisco, I am going to hit you off of the road because what if there is a dying girl in a 911, 911, you know, ambulance that has to get to an emergency room ASAP? You're telling me that your little thing right now is worth someone dying? Like, well, dude, think think know. about the people who are maybe going in for like just being with how much with how many layoffs there's been in tech over here, right? Exactly. Like, you don't like to work. In, no, not you even that. Imagine you're trying to get into an interview. You got an in-person oh, yeah. interview, mm -hmm, and you mm -hmm. get stopped, and that's when you—that's your one opportunity, dude. Dude, it's—it's like, it's so I hate that. I hate that when, yeah. especially when they let it happen. It's like, or the people that like glue themselves to the road, like, yeah, or, bro, yeah. Do you want to talk about it? Well, there's time and place to talk about that. Maybe not a golf podcast, yeah, but yeah. yes, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just like I just think it's crazy, but it's like. A golf event of all places just isn't just isn't that. But I mean, dude, that playoff between Tom Kim and Scotty Scheffler was really good. And they just looked like they were just having fun. Like it was literally like as if it was like you and your buddy decided mm -hmm. to play a match off the first tee. And yeah. they were just laughing. They were giggling. They were just having a good old time. It's like that's what good, strong competition looks like. Like, oh, heck yeah. You know, you spend all day. Sorry, not all day. You spend all year with this person. You see them every day. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it's OK to have. Some and they're fun. both really nice guys, like both, both genuinely are, nice yeah. guys. You saw Tom Kim. I think it was full swing, too. Right. More. Yeah. You saw more of him and the inside of him and and like Scotty Scheffler, just super nice guy. And it's like, yeah, yeah those are. Yeah, like I mean, right when he tied him at the end on eighteen, and they knew they were going into the playoff, like freaking uh, Tom, you could see Tom Kim behind his caddy, like getting ready to take his hat off, and then all of a sudden he's just like, <laughs> "Hey man, let's, <laughs> let's do this!" And then even Scotty just kind of lets up, and they just do their thing. But I mean, yeah. dude, it's just it's it's just so awesome. Like that was that was good, healthy competition right there, mm -hmm. you know, to see, and um, you know, and then what. Then I think the weekend, this last weekend was the, was the, the rocket, rocket mortgage. Rocket mortgage. Mm -hmm. um, man, I feel, I feel for Akashay. Oh like, my gosh. Dude. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a similar ish putt to the Rory McIlroy putt in the sense that it was, Rory's was obviously closer, but it was a breaker, you know, it wasn't yeah. straight. And he even said, I think like, I love pressure. I love, me yeah, to care about it, it. you know, all it. that stuff. He lives for it. And then he even said, like, you know, pressure got to me, you know, I'm just gonna take advantage of it and use this to help me better me next time. And it's all you can do. I mean yeah. just oh, laid it out there. So well. I, he played yeah, so good. He played so good all uh, for all four days, dude. It's just and and the thing is he's been he's been playing really freaking good. You've been seeing his name early up there. Oh yeah. You've been see you've been seeing him kind of hanging around, and it's just like he said, like. He's like, it's not that I don't know how to close out tournaments. Like, it's not that I haven't been in these pressure situations before. Right. He's like, just, I guess it's just not my time. Like, yeah. you know, just trusting his process, just understanding what's going on. I just think that's so huge. You so know, much sure for a young guy like that, you know? Literally. I mean, dude, we're watching, you know, kind of going into this next, into this next tournament, the John Deere. Like, the one question that everyone's been asking Justin and Jordan is, like, what's going on with you guys? When are you guys going to kind of figure it out? Like in the most respectful way that they possibly can. Yeah, but it's right. like, it's like, you know, Jordan's just still kind of reminiscing on, on the past and being like, 
well, I've always played really well here at the John Deere. Like I'm hoping that, that this is going to kind of spark a little bit of, you know, a little bit of a, a little bit of magic, I think is what mm-hmm. he said. Mm-hmm. Um, it's good and all, but dude, it's like behind, like whatever they're doing on the range. I just, I don't know what, I don't know what they're working on, but like their swings just look all over the place. Mm-hmm. I mean, like um, the, the last tournament at the, uh, at the, at the, Rocket. rocket yeah at the rocket um i was watching justin thomas on some of the featured on some of the featured groups on th- on thursday and fridays mm-hmm. and it looks like he's coming like like he's taking the club outside of the ball trying to drop in and be a little bit more steeper on the inside yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. from, from into out and trying to play a cut and that's not natural for him is it no it's it's not it's like it was he like must be so him. effed up that, like, if he's trying to go opposite of what he naturally does, you know that he is mentally and probably physically like me- messed up in the sense that, like, oh, if that's not feels if good. Nothing, yeah, yeah nothing feels good. Let's try the craziest thing that is uncomfortable, you know? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, like before, his takeaway used to be like just straight, straight back. Yeah, straight yeah. Back, I mean, I've looked at videos. I've watched many slow videos of right? his swing, mm-hmm. and now it's like he's trying to come outside and do like this little like. It kind of, kind of what I try to do, I think, where I try it, to come out in a little bit, but it's more, but it looks like he's trying to like really come kind of like a, like Matthew Wolf, not so much. Yeah. Of like okay. Super, or has the Joaquin same Neiman, how he like bends more. Does he bend? Yeah. Yeah. He's okay. just kind of getting, trying to get so much into that angle. It's like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, and I'm not like a coach, but it just doesn't look like what he's normally done, you know, where and he's not, had and, the most success. And it's hard to keep the consistency in that. You know, the more things you add to your movement and your swing, obviously the harder it is to make sure you check all those boxes here in every single swing. Yeah. Uh, dang, that's crazy. Yeah, um, and, and the other thing is, too, is like we – I mean, we spoke about this one when, when he finally separated from his dad. We knew that he was going to go through some crazy swing changes because now he's got – he's got coaches in his ear who are like, well, Hey, I've always been a huge fan of your swing, but I think if you did this, you could probably see Uh, 10 more yards. Maybe you could miss, you know, tighten up that dispersion. And when you're thinking about all those things and inside, you know, during competition, like, dude, Mm -hmm. you know, I actually saw, I actually saw a pretty funny video today on TikTok That was like my new swing thought tempo. And it's like, it's like, (laughs) it goes like hot, too hey baby oh do you know what that <laughs> oh my gosh dude. the well, guy just the guy just peers like three shots into a part of five that are just dots <laughs> <laughs> well i mean like you, you're talking about justin uh justin thomas with all these people in his ear and that reminds me of one of my buddies i'm not going to mention his name but that i play high school baseball with and he ended up playing d1 and, and things like that really nice guy but he was always in the head he had the body like six four six five always in good shape always ate healthy great dude smart always had good grades you know the prototypical like guy you want your daughter to date you know like just like a good good guy but he was just in his head too much yeah. too much in his head and i remember he would tell me I remember one time specifically i still remember this probably like what 15 years ago in high school He's like, you know, I'm, I'm starting to find, finally find my swing again. You know, I'm, I'm finally feeling good at the plate. And, and now I got my dad just been like, you know, I know you're hitting well right now. But, like, when you would put your hands, like, right here, you know, like, you would, you were hitting the ball, like, really well, you know. Like, just keep that in mind. It's like, well, now I'm thinking about, do I got to do that with the hands? And, and I'm like, dude, just do what feels – like, to me, I'm like, dude, just do what feels comfortable. Like, yeah. my dad can tell me whatever he wants. My dad didn't – I love my dad to death. Don't get me wrong. I know he probably listened to this podcast, but he only made it to freshman freshman baseball, and that was it. You know, yeah. I I made it a little bit farther. I, I have an idea. It got me here. No, he did have Larry Lee, the head coach of Cal Poly baseball, that that jumped him. He really didn't have a chance after that because I mean Larry Lee was a stud. But never, never, nevertheless, like it's kind of like parenting. You know, like when you first have a kid, and you have all those like tips and opinions oh, yeah. in your ear, like oh, make sure to do this, make sure to do this. It's like. Well, for my parents, can ask you. <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. So it's like for my parents, like, yeah, I'll listen to everything and I'll filter out what I'm going to listen to. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to listen to, but I will take what I think is will work and what I want to do with, with my child. And, you know, same with your parents, I'm sure. But when you hear it from the other, the, the parents-in-law, you know, you, you might get a little more irritated. Like, hey, 
I'm, I'm this is my baby. I know what I'm doing. Even though they have the same heart, they just want to help out. You know, they're doing it. They're saying it for a good cause, and they're not saying it to make you feel like you don't know what you're doing. But you feel that. So I know I did. Um, and you just need to learn of when you, what you need to listen to, what feels comfortable, what feels natural, and then go with that. Go with your gut because 99 times out of 100, that's going to work. And guess whose life it is? It's yours. So yeah. if you're going to listen to someone else and fail based off someone else's opinions, I wouldn't want to live that way. I want to live off of my opinions and what I went from because nothing's worse than failing because of somebody else. And then you're kind of resenting, oh, man, I wish I would have done it my way. See where I would have ended up. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're you're a thousand percent right. I just, you know, again, there's a lot of different things, you know, I mean, I deal with that all the time. You know, I, I kind of like what, what we just spoke about with with the babies is, you know, I just had a conversation with my dad regarding some some events that happened over the weekend in san francisco i'm not gonna mm -hmm. say anything because it's oh yeah, yeah yeah i got you i got you but but it's just still it's like you know afterwards is you know i felt a bit kind of i don't want to say offended but um i was kind of in in shock because i was like hmm you think i'd actually like you thought i would like i would let my my kid go to something like that you know, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and I was just kind of like, okay, maybe with a paintball I'm, gun. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, I was just like, okay, like I'm not gonna think too much into oh it. Oh my gosh, man! One of those things where it was like, you know, I I was raised by you, and I and I I came from a pretty stern, you know, kind of upbringing, and it's mm -hmm. like there's like I understand that there's just certain things that you know what you just it's no like. Mm -hmm no questions, no discussion, like it's done. No, that there, it's not for them, you know, yeah. but oh, when yeah. he asked me oh, to yeah. kind of express some of his thoughts, I was just like, you really thought that I would be like, yeah, go ahead. Go do, My you know, God. Go do that. Yeah. But, no but, way. Uh -huh. But um, yeah. I get you though. Like to that same point is, you know, the golf swing is a swing that is, I think the, the closest person that people speak about that has a perfect swing is Adam Scott. Right. Mm, Everyone says it's still, it's the absolute it's like a timeless swing, you know, yeah. it's, it's still just everybody yeah. says it's just the it's it's the pinnacle of mm -hmm. of golf swings. And um sometimes you see guys like you know, like Sam Burns or say what was his name? Sam the the amateur from uh who had who did Oh really no, not Sam Burns, it was uh, uh Sam Bennett. Bennett, yeah. yeah. That's right. It. It's it's literally what he said, right? Like, I know I don't have the greatest looking swing, but it works, right? Yeah. It's like and golf doesn't doesn't judge you on your swing. Exactly. You know? And it was the same thing, like when when um when when John Rom was coming up, everyone was like, Oh my god, like why is he why does he only take the club three quarters and then you know do all this stuff? It's like, dude, it just works, you know. It's the one thing that you can never perfect, but we're always chasing for what is the perfect swing for for us you mm -hmm, know but it, mm -hmm. it always gets it always gets interrupted when we see guys like rory yep john rom mm -hmm. adam scott you know uh um, and you think oh they're doing it great and then yeah. why can't you implement that maybe i'll be great like going back to baseball really quick charlie morton mm -hmm. if, you, if you know charlie more than the pitcher i don't know if he's still pitching the i think he is i think he might be for the atlanta braves but he pitched or the houston astros he came up i forget with who but Roy Halladay, Hall of Fame pitcher. We were no hitter for the Phillies in the playoffs. I think he won a World Series with them. I'm not 100% sure, but he was a, a stud pitcher. Charlie Morton struggled in the minors for years. Then he thought, you know what? Roy Halladay has great control. He's got some great philosophy. Velocity, not philosophy, velocity. Let, let me just try that. Literally came up to the pros within a couple of years after that. And now he's literally still pitches like Roy Halladay, but he's like 97, 98 miles an hour. He's a lanky dude. So he's got some, mm -hmm. he's got some arm speed, but yeah, like, he's with the Braves right now. He's with the Braves. Okay. But yeah. like he literally changed his whole way of pitching to emulate someone that was successful and it worked for him. I'm not saying that'll work for everybody, but I'm sure, you know, like I think, who was it? Uh, Arnold Palmer that was said, swing your swing. Yeah. You know? And yeah, I mean, that's the one thing where, 
for me, my thing, I love how my swing is right now in the sense that if I can do it correctly. I was at the range two weeks ago, recorded myself. My swing was completely different. And I was like, what the heck? This is not what I've been swinging. This is not what I've been trying to do. What is going on? I need to watch the videos from when I hit well, when I got fitted. And I'm going back to that. And I had no issues on the previous video that we just did. But I'm finally looking connected. I don't have like the chicken elbow, you know, all that stuff that's not pretty, which I'm hoping for more consistency. Um, but that's my biggest thing. Whatever I can find that's consistent, looks kind of pretty, looks decently pretty. I know mine isn't like the prettiest swing, but for me, I'm like, hey, I got no chicken elbow. That's pretty. And I can hit it and I can hit it pretty, pretty decent. Okay. That's all I want. That's all I want. Yeah. Yeah. No, man. I mean, yeah, I think swing your swing. Thousand percent. I mean, every something to John live by. Daly. You got the John Daly's. You got the, uh, like you said, John Rom. I think he had a club foot. Apparently, yeah. he had a club foot as a kid. Yeah. That's why he can't get as much turn on his uh, on his golf swing. But like you have all these players that show that it is possible to make it with a different swing, not a yeah. traditional swing. Especially Jordan Spieth. That's another guy. He has a he has the crazy chicken elbow. That was like his thing when they came up. Like, oh man, like. I don't know if that's maybe the issue with him, you know, but uh, then you see someone like Tiger Woods and Adam Scott, you're like, that's how you swing a golf club. That is just yeah. poetry and motion. I mean, you can make a grown man cry just looking at that thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I know, dude, it's a, uh, it's an interesting game that we chase, that we chase perfection on over and over and over at a price. <laughs> and we know we're not going to every time yeah. we know that we're not going to find yeah. that perfection, but yeah but cool man well do you got any big plans for for tomorrow honestly no uh we we're doing a little block party out here uh in the area but uh i mean i don't know if you've seen our weather out here um yeah dude you guys got you guys got we're, we're getting guys got a scorcher coming on yeah <laughs> if I lay out like the this whole entire week uh no just today just today it started today was the low of the week of 109 over the next seven days, it'll be like 111, 111, 114, 115. One. And I'm like, what is going on here? Like, I remember when I played tournaments back as a kid, probably against you, we were like, it was like in the 90s and I was freaking out. Like, it was, uh, I was in slow then. Obviously, it's a lot different of a climate, but like, it was low 90s. Now it's like low hundreds. I'm okay. I'm still okay with it. I was just outside like a couple hours ago and it was like 102, 103. I'm like, I can do this, but like 112, 115. But you're like, but I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, right. I'd rather not have to take an allergy pill. So when I take off my polo after a round over 110 degrees, that I'm not because I, I get heat rash like really easily. Not like anything that's like uh, itchy or irritating, but like it don't look pretty when I take off my shirt. Like, oh my gosh, what happened, dude? Um, it's not pretty. But now I got to take like a freaking allergy pill to help out with that. But I mean, besides that, it's not bad. I think when we played on Wednesday or a couple weeks ago. Um, it was like it was gonna be a high of like 102, 103 when we started at nine. So it never really got crazy. I think maybe 99 to 100, but um, I'm fine with the heat, but like yeah, it's a little crazy. It's a little crazy. I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, it's gonna be tomorrow's supposed to be like I think another hundred, but we're gonna we're gonna go down to Redwood City, go go take Adelina to be with the grandparents and watch the uh mm -hmm watch the parade and then just come home, hang out. My birthday's on Monday. And so what day is that? Is that the eighth? Eighth. Yeah. Ooh, happy big early three. birthday. Awesome. Big three, three. Ooh, welcome to the club. All right. Yeah. So, um. so, um, I don't know if I'll be able to get any golfing, but I, you know, I have the option of playing Sunday, which is it's our red, white, and blue or yeah. Red, white, and blue men's club tournament so you play six holes from six holes from the blues six holes from the whites six holes from the reds i saw something uh lou stagner posted something about this with his club yeah. that he did i was like that yeah. and you and you pick right which ones you get to do it's like a strategy thing where people get to change yeah. it up. wow that's yeah. kind of cool dude you definitely yeah. gotta shoot you gotta go and shoot in that day you got it. I, I am. I am. I'm, I already got my my stuff set up, and I'm going to be playing. With okay. Corey make sure you know. bring. Make sure you bring the memory card and. The yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be playing with Corey, and so Corey's like, "Yeah, it doesn't bug me. Like, I don't care. He's like, if anything, I'll. He's like, I'll hold it for you. And I was like, Damn, I just want to get a camera, dude. Like, I've been I've been searching so hard. I've been searching so hard for one. And I'm just like, 
all right, let's just let's just hang on a little bit longer. We'll be okay. You know. No, but dude, I'm telling you, once you pull that trigger, like Brandon, the first time I shot with that with that camera with the with that uh, uh Panasonic, it was the first time I ever shot. It the first time Brandon ever shot. And it was the way back to you for the first time. And we actually shot pretty decently. And yeah. then it got better, you know, but people, Brandon's like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot, you know, I'll, I'll record you, you record me, you know, yada, yada. And I got friends like, hey, I'll, I'll record with you. My next door neighbor that was like, hey, anytime you want to just, I don't even have to play. He's like, just, yeah. if you if you want me to come on out, just hang out with the guys. That's fine. Give me a drink or two, you know, on the course and I'll, I'll record for you. I mean, I'd love him to play with us. Don't get me wrong. But like yeah. if an, op- an opportunity arises, we're like, we already have a foursome. <laughs> He would be down to just record and that's yeah. awesome because then you can focus on golf instead of having to worry about the shots yeah like Which, carmel valley yeah, exactly. <laughs> i've been telling people that where it's like that makes sense you know when you're not used to it kind of like when you just start the gopro for the first time you know you're kind of like ah like it, it, yeah. it throws you off your groove it throws you off your routine thinking mm-hmm. about your next shot um but pull the trigger man i'm telling you it's, it's I, a good oh, I, I am it's it's in the works i'm just just wait, just waiting for for one that just seems like okay, I I, I got it, you know, this is it. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, yeah, it's I'm, I'm excited. So yeah, and I've already just been kind of piecing together little things. I got like a good like studio. Um, uh, what's it called? Um, Mike. No, what's what's the piece that it that it stands on the stand? Tripod, tripod, tripod. Yeah, but yeah. this is just like a—it's just a one pot, so it's like has like a rotational ball, so you can Dude, balance it. I was actually out. looking into those. I was looking into those because I found one on Facebook I, Market for like twenty-five bucks. That's what I was. Uh, that's what I pretty much do with my buddy. My buddy Kyle was like, "What I do is he puts he instead of keeping it on the tripod when he records, he puts it all together, puts mm-hmm. one leg longer than the other, so he basically has that mobility." Yeah, I'm like. That's freaking. I need to look at that. Yeah, That's this smart. thing's got like a big old. It's got like a big old like rotating ball. So if you're on angles, it just keeps mm-hmm. it keeps it still on whatever yeah. angle you're on. So if you're mm-hmm. sitting on the hillside, you can just okay. It's it's positioned perfectly. You gotcha. So, yeah. Yeah, dude. Oh man. Well, well, I think we'll wrap up the podcast for this week. Hopefully, again, you guys have a great Independence Day. You have a great Fourth of July. Don't eat too many hot dogs and try to stay away from the vegan ones. Like. uh What's his, what's the, what's Joey, the Joey Chestnut? Joey, Joey Chestnut. Uh, you know, eat a lot of hamburgers. Again, if you guys are interested in, you know, some sick golf polos, like I'm not kidding. I wish I was wearing my 4th of July polo that I wore for the video, but like the 4th of July polos are sick over at Sunday Swag. We got 15% off discount codes. Check out the links in the description and I mean, get some. I, I think I have like eight polos already. Like, I love these things. I'm already starting to sell some of my foot joys because I'm like, man, there's no reason to. If I'm going to promote the other ones, you know, what's the point of having yeah. the other one? And and they're great quality. And they're only what? I think the most are like 64 bucks. They're usually like 58, 56 yeah. to 64 bucks, which is under price compared to foot joy, compared to bad birdies. So I think it's like 80. And then you have the Sunday Red, which is like 130 bucks. I know it's Tiger Woods stuff, but you saw him play in that stuff and how sweaty those shirts look. It was terrible. I was not sweating that. Yeah. But yeah. Eh. I don't think I don't think anybody wants to wear a dead tiger, dude. Oh, shots fired, shots fired. All right, well, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hang up now. <laughs> Thank you guys for your support. Right. Have a great night, everybody.